Hi, today we're going to talk about marketing during times of uncertainty. First, we'll start out talking about emotional intelligence, then we're going to get into some behavioral economic principles, then we'll talk, of course, about downturn marketing, how to stand out from the noise, and we'll end with a section on my company, Idaho. So first, emotional intelligence. Adaptability. Darwin taught us it is not the strongest that survives. In fact, it is the species that is most able to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself that survives. So we want to be adaptable to not just survive, but to thrive. Mandela taught us that the brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Courage, by definition, means feeling afraid and acting anyways. It's okay to feel afraid. It's okay to talk about fear. It's critical to not be paralyzed by fear. That's the real goal. We have primitive instincts. We're wired that if we're afraid, if we feel attacked, we have a response that's fight, flight, or freeze. Our goal is to do none of those things. We want to get calm, or at least calmer, before making significant decisions. Anyone who's ever felt attacked by a partner or maybe a boss knows that's probably not the best time to make your most rational decisions. So we want to make sure we're getting calm before we make those significant moves. A big reason people feel fear and anxiety is a lack of knowledge. So what we want to do is we want to communicate with our customers in a manner that speaks to them personally and provides the answers to appease their concerns. There's a great parable called Who Moved My Cheese, which some of you may already know, but I'll give a quick recap for those who haven't heard it. Day after day, mice in a maze are used to the cheese always appearing in the exact same place. Until one day, the cheese isn't in its spot anymore. The mice that continue to check the old spot, they feel like victims. They get angry that the cheese isn't where it's supposed to be. While the mice that accepts the change moves on and finds new cheese. So what are the morals here? Change happens. We want to anticipate change. We want to monitor the change, always keeping an eye on it. We want to adapt to change quickly so we can survive and thrive. We want to change along with it, and we want to enjoy it. We shouldn't make this as fun as possible, and then we should be ready to do it all again quickly because it's going to change again. All right, so let's talk about behavioral economics a little bit. First of all, it's not about you when it comes to your messaging. The wrong question that many marketers ask is, what do I want my customers to know or to think or to do? That's the wrong way to approach it. Think about what do my customers want to know, think, do? What is the value to them? And work backwards from that to get to the value for you. Personalization is one powerful way to help deliver the messaging that is relevant to them, to the customer. Emotions versus rationality is another really important concept to understand. We're emotional beings that think we're rational beings. Most decisions are rooted in how we feel, not reason. People think they make decisions based on rationality, but what they really are more likely to do is make emotional decisions and then unconsciously search for the rationality to justify those decisions. Video is one incredibly powerful tool for emotional impact, telling people how to feel. Context is of course also really, really critical. I think we all know that, but context is everything. It's not just about what you tell them, it's about the context in which they hear it. So we have to be really, really mindful, especially these days of the context in which we're communicating and make sure we're looking at our content accordingly. With that in mind, we need to be ready to iterate quickly. The world is changing fast, so our messaging must keep up. Out-of-date messaging quickly feels tone deaf. Build things modular for easy changes. Everything we do at Itamu is super modular so we can change it quickly. Loss aversion is another important concept to understand. In short, loss aversion tells us that people are more motivated to avoid loss than to gain. For example, act now so you don't lose $10 will drive more action than act now to get $10. Or to put it another way, losses hurt even more than wins feel good. Belonging is another key principle. Individuals look to the behavior of their peers to inform their decision making. The desire to fit in is part of our instinct as pack animals because the animal that leaves the pack is the most vulnerable. Belonging messages are those such as people like you, people near you, your peers. Again, this is where personalization becomes super helpful so we can say people in New York, people like you. All those data points we have now become really, really powerful to build that sense of belonging. Timing, of course, is also very critical. Timing is actually more important than knowledge. Stuff like financial literacy, health literacy have all been proven ineffective when they're delivered at a time when the decision maker isn't ready to make a relevant decision. 
For example, imagine teaching a teenager about retirement savings. Well, by the time they reach the point where they're ready to make a decision, they've forgotten those details. So make sure you're educating someone at the time that is relevant most for them to make such a decision. All right, let's talk about downturn marketing specifically. Share of voice. The connection between share of market and share of voice has been well proven over the years. The higher your share of voice compared to your actual market share, the more likely your brand is to grow in the subsequent year. If you increase marketing investments at a time when your competitors are reducing, you should substantially increase the saliency of your brand, establishing an advantage that can be maintained for years. And remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Think long term. Competitors restricting marketing opens up an opportunity. A smart front runner will seize the lead and work to increase it while others are still flagging. If the others allow the gap to widen, it will be tough if not impossible for them to regain the lost ground when the pace picks up again. That leads to the big question, to spend or not to spend. And it's been proven that an increase in marketing spend during a recession can gain a long-term advantage for a brand. Many businesses anticipating reduced sales cut back on marketing costs, leaving their brand in a less competitive position when the economy recovers. Research studies confirm that the best strategy in terms of long-term ROI is to increase marketing expenditure during an economic slowdown. Okay, there's a lot of marketing out there right now, so let's talk about how to stand out from the noise. First of all, again, don't panic. Why is everyone grabbing toilet paper right now? It's panic. And we all know that panic causes tunnel vision. Again, we have to get calm to make rational, safe decisions. Keep in mind that most information is transmitted to the brain visually, not audibly. These long emails that a lot of people are sending, they're not getting read, right? So we want to think visually in a means that communicates our message clearly and impactfully. We want to stand out. We're getting bombarded with a mess of messaging right now. Video is one incredible way to catch attention. I think we've already seen a lot of success in that space. Personalization takes it to the next level. This is my message that demands my attention. Personalized video combines that emotional impact of video with the power of personalization. We see it in the results all the time. Higher open rates, higher click-through rates, higher completion rates, higher conversion rates. Because we're personalized, because we're video, we can stand out from the noise. So what is a personalized video? We take your client data, and then we grab the scenes that are just relevant for that one individual. We put their data into their video. So everyone sees something totally unique for them, for all your clients. It's secure, it's at scale, and it's fast. That's the Itamu Edge. And of course, get to the point in your messaging. Attention spans are short. Some messages require some time. It might take you 30 seconds or a few minutes even to explain a message. That's where personalized video is so powerful. Others can be told in seconds. In that, you might just want to do a personalized GIF, a short, looping, few second message that says everything you want to see. Here are some samples of personalized GIFs item is done. A few seconds, right to the point. And I love this Dale Carnegie quote. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. And we want to be thinking about the many channels that are accessible to us email, website, SMS, put it in your app, social, even through chatbots and e-commerce stores, we can get these things out there and really reach the audience. Which leads me to the last section, Itamu. Itamu is the leader in personalized video. When it comes to volume, speed, quality, agility, and security, there really is no other competition. We have a proven track record, over 150 brands in 50 countries, many of the Fortune 500s. We support really unlimited creativity. Whatever you want to personalize, we're really only limited by your imagination. Lots of results that we can talk about. It's really a new genre of video entirely. We have a lot, a lot of samples that I encourage you to check out. You can head over to idaboo.com to see those samples and to learn a lot more. Thanks for your time.